Hello and welcome to the dawn of the second season of the Savage Lands, featuring this wonderful little world here, filled with a low amount of resources, a lot of mythical creatures and stuff, and a civilization that we want to see conquer the world. So we're playing in the, in the footsteps of the Towers of Age, and season one we have founded one foothold down here in the areas where so far mostly goblins are dwelling. There's a handful of humans holding out somewhere in between these cursed lands, and there's mostly goblins there. So the first season was the founding of Gulf Cobalt, which is a pretty a pretty minimalistic survivalist base devoid of anything valuable and in the second season the Towers of Age will use this point here as a foothold to send heavily armed forces and found a a real threat to the goblin menace down here and wash it wash them from the surface of the earth that's the plans for season two so i have already made some plans and this time i have spoken to a trustworthy geologist unlike the one that has founded the first expedition they promised us iron and then they sent us to an entirely different location that was devoid of iron so no this time we went for a good one so we're going to search for the embark location that i scouted out we're going, of course, to the Untamed Wilds, because that's kind of like the conduct for the series we're always going to play in the Savage Lands Untamed Wilds environment. We're going to look for Fluxstone. We want an aquifer, because having an aquifer is actually really a beneficial thing. And we want iron, because that's the best material for anything considering war. So we're going to have Fluxstone, we're going to have iron, and we're gonna have water. So let's start the uh, scan. And um, I was considering many things before when I was preparing this uh, season. I was uh, considering to start in this area here, but that was a little bit, uh, well, I don't, I, I don't want to have military forces to roam through the cursed steppe here and grass savanna and, and grasslands here that's evil biome that's the cursed lands lots of bad things can happen in the cursed lands so we would either stage or attack from this flank but that's really far away from uh, Nolith Litmus and that was uh, narrative wise unrealistic so I figured that this area here is going to be the staging point for our attack we don't want to settle down right in the face of the enemy because that would be brash and uh, unwise. But here in the backwater of uh, of the of the lands of the Strapping Steppe, here we find a really really nice spot. So we got iron here in the in the curve of the uh, of the river at the northernmost point where I'm hovering right now. And when we look down there, we have gold, silver, copper, and nickel. So we have real wealth of lots of valuable materials, exactly the things that we need to arm forces to wash this filth away from the earth. So this is where we're going to embark and let's see what fortress it will be this time because I, I always love to not know what the fortress will be. We're going to go for a standard embark. I mean, I was experimenting around with a uh, careful preparation, but I figured Usually things are okay with the standard embark. So here we go. We are going to have brightness portals. Shin missed them. All right. So uh, we are at a uh, pleasantly deep spot here. There's a lot of uh, hill going on here. So when we when you check out the environment here, we are we we are at a elevation of zero. We got some water ponds to work with right in front of us. This is a pleasant place to be. I like it already. I can I can imagine some nice fortifications going on here. We have even a nice mountain site to carve our fortress into. This is a wonderful embarkation point. I really really like it. So let's see. I do I do see a decent amount of trees here, but. Uh, well, 
I think it would be worthwhile to uh, to check out the caverns. I do also notice that we don't have a insane wealth of stuff to forage. So there's uh, some plants above Earth, but it's uh, it's actually not that much. So this is probably the point which I'm most concerned about. According to our geolo geologist, our our iron will be found in this vicinity here. While in this area here, we will have mostly the more valuable metals. So I think we are going to start and dig our fortress here into the clay. And we're going to go underground foraging for gold, because that uh, for iron, because that will be a much safer thing to do. And it's going to be much closer to the wagon. So let's get started. Mm, I, I always love the feeling of a new fortress, you know, that's that's just a beautiful thing. I I am so eager to find out what's going to be inside this uh, area here. And uh, we're going to remove the mountain slope here and let's assign some laborers and, uh, and, and make sure that these uh, dudes, they behave. So first off, we, we disable automatic web collection. No, 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 just no. And we also want to have a couple of extra mining people. So let's put the expedition leader into work and the mason. We have three picks to begin with. So I also want to have a bit of uh, stuff here. And well, I don't know really for sure how brightness portals will be uh, fortified, but I think we will have some sort of above earth building so um yeah I'm, I'm picturing something outside here like a little bit of a uh, fortified building or something like that throning uh beyond the the river brook something uh, that you can see when you come from north so you can't really see uh here here's gonna be the fortress something like that small tower some some kind of structure i can already see that happening so that means we can safely say that this will be some sort of uh, entrance area okay wonderful so the first thing that i want to do inside of this entrance area is we're going to dig a side arm down here and we're going to make a bit of a stash you know, I made the experience that having a bit of a stash is really a good thing at the beginning. We want to make sure that we can stow away everything which is on the wagon and uh, make ourselves at home. Speaking about which, what do we have here? Giant grackles. I hate giant birds. We even have freaking alligators. Oh. I knew this was sounded too good to be true. So we we embarked into a literal hellhole. Awesome. All right, let's quickly um, dig out this, this room so we can get everybody inside into a safe environment and think about how we handle the madness outside there. Alligators are really, really bad news, I think. I cannot imagine them being good news. So we're going to put some cage traps in front of that as soon as possible. But uh, first off, we have to get everything, uh, everything inside somehow. So at the same time, we're going to think about this as the main entrance into the into the fortress. So, well, I think considering the the hostility of our environment, we are going to go for an improvised plan. I want to design this fortress. A little bit more thoroughly, a little bit more detailed, and um, well, Nolith Letmos was a fine fortress, but it had a lot of deficiencies that I want to do better this time. So, what I'm trying to say is, we're going to make a starter camp someplace where our dwarves can stay safe. So, the first thing we're going to do for the big stockpile is we're going to disable corpses and refuse we don't want these here these things are bad because if refuse is enabled all the stuff in the stockpile is starting to degrade because it's a game mechanic there's refuse in the stockpile 
game things you want to get rid of the stuff basically so we got this and the next thing i want to do is i want to have the the fundamentals so we need an office for the manager and we need some space to to craft things out so we're going to designate this corner to that and i also want to have kind of a dormitory some place where we can at least let those uh let those guys sleep at all right so they're hauling the stuff now downstairs and i mean this is by no means a a, a thing that can work out because it's just too small but uh, I, I really want to get our valuables downstairs and craft some doors, traps, something to give me a feeling of safety. Because honestly, this place is way more scary than Olive Letmos. I, I, I really, really don't like alligators. We have so much... Why is there under lichen already here? This is tier 3 cavern moss. Hmm. Let's see what all these mysteries uh, are going to try to tell us. Okay, we have the basics down. So let's go for the basic workshops. I don't need a stone worker because I don't have any... I haven't found any stone to work with yet. So we're going to start out with a carpenter's workshop. And let's see. So if this is going to be the main entrance we can safely dig out a bit deeper. I don't want to have my first staircase very, very uh, early on here, but now let's dig our first staircase. Oh gosh darn. So our, here we have already the first conflict with sloppy and hasty design. No problem though. We're going to take a little bit of a detour here. Okay. So, let's go downstairs, and I'm a great fan of uh, staggered staircases, so let's see how how far we will we will get there. So let's take that a couple of levels downstairs, just like that. So here we go. A way to make it a little bit less annoying. There we go. So this staircase's main purpose is now to probe the environment to see how the geology here evolves. Fire clay. Now that's good news. We will have a nice opportunity for uh, clay industry. Andesite. So we've struck the first stone. More andesite. Yeah, that might go on for a few layers like that now. Good news, we have struck uh, stone quite early. And uh, here we have another andesite layer. Wonderful, so stone workshop, we need that now too. We got stone to work with. So, I mean, this is such good news that we have obviously all the, the underground uh, vegetation going on right away, because that means Wait, where are there? Why are there dead hamsters? I thought I did disabled corpses. Get that away. Ah, I don't have another. No. So let's do this like that. That might be the reason. So, um, where was I? <laughs> Sometimes these things are just so darned uh, distracting. So, let's do refuse and corpses. I bet I will, uh... Oh, gosh. Here. Sometimes I keep searching for things in this game. Okay. Now then. We need a manager's place. So, let's get started with that. And then we're going to start and work... Some sort of safety. Those crocodiles are giving me a really, really bad time. You know, I just feel endangered while we don't have uh, or or stuff and or people downstairs there. You know. Okay. Hauling takes a very high priority in your with your dwarves, and that's why we do have um, 
nobody building the workshop at, as of now. So because of that, because of the many, many hauling jobs that these seven have to do right now, we are going to go and put the planter alone into the duty of hauling and uh, open up the other workforce, as you see. It's getting, immediately the stuff is getting done. That's really important for me right now because I really, really want to get the door and chair done because I need the manager. We need to manage things. I need to automate stuff because uh, we really need to get things going, you know. We do have everything around to arm some dwarves and I'm really, really considering an, uh, an impromptu um, militia here just to have somebody to draft when... Uh, when things go bad. Yeah, you know what? I I really do like the idea. So knowing that the uh, main bulk of the fortress will grow more into that direction, we're, we're going to take the impromptu barracks over here. Just something small. I don't want to overdo it here. Don't want to build things that I will regret later. It's only so uh, that's only space that we need to fill. And uh, now then, let's see. Get the stuff done. The chair's already done, Eurist. Where's the door? Okay. So, let's get the door and the chair down. Wonderful. And there we got our first, our first official room. And we need to uh, get a meeting spot uh, going at ASAP. There are so many things that we need to get going, but uh, one thing at a time. Right on. So let's get the manager spot. I like to get to. Uh, I like to put my expedition later on that. It's pretty good start. Okay. Now we can automate things. And the first thing that I want to do is, I want to put seven beds on the on the list, and uh, here just another door, so we get a sleeping spot for everybody going. And, uh, well, make that two doors, maybe, for the barracks here as well. So, let's get downstairs and ponder. So, we have that staircase going on here. And, uh, in all honesty, I don't think that this will uh, ever be part of the safety system of the, of the fortress. I think this will be just a, a civilian shaft, you know? Low security. So... What I'm trying to say is my security system will ultimately include a bridge going here, shutting off the uh, area there. So we can put that up as a uh, wall. You can build these and link them to the lever. And then if you switch the lever, they transform into a wall. And then we put up some nasty traps into that direction, something like that. Okay, but enough of that. Let's get started with some groundwork for a civilian core. So I want to have some workshops. And I think here where the stone layers begin, we can get start working. I want to reserve this stone layer here for um, agricultural things. Usually I like to have that on my topmost level. So we're going to be starting out and uh, let's get this done with a large nexus, so to say, and a large alley leading into a large stockpile area. So this is where I envision the, the stone workers, you know. And that's why I, why I draw this large, because I know that the stone workers, they always need lots of space to work with. So now we got the general size of things. So let's draw that once more. There we go. And that's going to be now the woodworkers then. It's going to be a smaller area because I know that these things regularly don't take up that, that much uh, space. And let's make sure that we get ourselves downstairs again. So we carve out the general areas. And we have the first piece of good news. Tetrahedrite. right. That means we have now access to copper and tin. Uh, no, silver. 
So that's uh, copper and silver are in itself already pretty good, uh, pretty good stuff. Okay, so the beds have been completed, and now let's uh, let's put up a uh, a impromptu um, such situation here. So I'm going to put up one bed over here into the, the barracks. And there we go. Not going to do uh, too much about the barracks there. Just want to make sure that we have somebody who's wearing armor that I can send against the animals if they're trying to bite somebody's ass off. Okay, so militia commander. Um, we, we don't have anybody in a particularly good uh, position for that, so let's take the Fisher Dwarf, you know. These guys are vicious. So, we want metal armor, and we're, we're going to leave that only to, uh, co to good old English, you know. And we're going to assign the uh, weaponry to him. I hope we got some armor in the starting gear. I don't know, though. Do we? If not, that would be uh, quite a uh, well. Then, uh, then give him uh, regular clothing instead. Let's see how that'll work out. They are quite busy. Let's check back in in a while and see how his situation has evolved. So, we've struck amethysts. Mm. It's uh, it's one of my favorite gemstones in real life. So. Brightness portals seems to greet us with a uh, with a friendly smile. That makes me rather anxious. You know, don't trust the package that seems to be too good to be true. It's something you always should be aware of. But until then, let's appreciate what we got there. Amethyst, well, let's see. Sign a broker. Mm -hmm. What does, uh, okay, expedition, Mr. Expedition Leader, he assumes it's around 100 dwarf bucks. Oh, uh, well. That's an assumption, Eurist. Let's see. Okay, so woodworkers, stoneworkers, metalworkers. And then I should bring up the, the crafts people. And then we got the city core. I want to bring up a uh, a, a tower-like structure here, which uh, doesn't fan out on each level so much. But uh, I, I rather want to, I want to use several elevation levels. Let's see if the caverns are, <laughs> are, are agreeing with my plans. We'll see about that. We also need to think about uh, diverting some water down our, uh, our base. That should be not too much of an issue. Okay then, so there's uh, there's lots of amethyst there. That's a start of a... It's a pretty good start, I like that. Okay, so how are the alligators? They disappeared. Good news. We're still going to set up some cage traps uh, in front of this place. So we need mechanisms. I I don't want to uh, build anything else upstairs anymore, which uh, would embarrass us. So let's make sure that we also get the general structure going on here. And this area up there will be farming but right now i i want to get things done more like into this direction because this is where i want to process the stuff and i want to have a still up and running and i want to forage what's uh, above up above here for our starting um for our starting stuff there so Oh no, he's not. He doesn't seem to be capable to pick up his stuff. But uh, let's see. Maybe that helps if we assign him 
to some training routine. Usually if you assign them to training, they are trying to pick up their gear to do some training. Exactly. Look at him go. Now he's got an axe. Good boy. Now we, uh, we put him off duty again. But, uh, well, obviously we don't have anything except for that poor guy. But, uh, well, be that as it may, the first wave of immigrants will come. And uh, since the alligators have decided to sink back into their watering hole and uh, eye at us contemptively from there, because I don't believe that they're gone. I'm pretty sure they're not gone. I'm pretty sure they're still around. We'll see about that. I stay mistrust, uh, distrustful, and I think that's a good thing. And uh, right on point. I was like, and now one of these giant birds is starting to wreak havoc upon my dudes. But uh, it's just stupid dogs starting a fight again, which uh, reminds me of our duty to put up a uh, pen right in front of our base. Uh, that's that's not ideal. We're uh, we're going to make a better one, promise. But for starters, for starters, we're going to have them there. Okay. So I I think the dogs will win. I hope the dogs will win. I don't care. It's a giant skunk, you know. I hope it doesn't start to get agitated and hunt down my 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 dudes. Let's hope the dogs will win. The dogs will win for sure. So let's get up. Oh, what wrong direction? So I said woodworkers, stone workers. So I want to have the mechanics workshop up and running here ASAP. And uh, we're going to carve out the entire bay here because I think I want those amethysts. And then we're going to see what we, what we can do there. So for starters, this is going to be the area where we accept all the stone. This is not ideal. We need to reconfigure that and as soon as we can. But uh, for the meantime, that's going to suffice. Okay. And so the most important part is, going to be, is, uh, is carved out right now. And we need to bring up the still, the kitchen now because that's really, really important that we start producing food and a fishery will be required as well. Those silly dwarves, they, they leave out that corner here. That drives me nuts. <laughs> we're going to, uh, we're going to put up the fishery there. Okay, so these are the basics. Let's make sure the kitchen doesn't uh, do anything we don't want them to do. We don't want them to cook with the booze for now. Later we can allow that, but uh, for now, no. And there's an abundance of amethyst going on here. What a pleasure. That's, that's really, uh, that's really delightful. All right, so we got that up and running. So it's time to assign our first uh, permanent work orders here. So we want to brew stuff at the still always. These are, for me, always the most important things. So for the starter base, we're going to make them really, really simple. Whenever there's something brewable, by all means, brew it. And we're going to go on over to the, to the area here. And then we set up the next set of uh, really, really important uh, work orders. And we're seeing towards the end of the first episode already. Time flies with a new fortress, doesn't it? So we're going to put up the mechanic, because I need those mechanisms quite badly. And the second thing is going to be the Crafts Dwarf, because I don't want to spend valuable wood for barrels. So instead, we're going to make um, rock pots. These are made at the Crafts Dwarfs workshop, and I, I really, I really like them. They are a, a really good alternative, and we're going to make them out of endosite because that stuff seems to be very abundant here. So let's uh, define a number of five as the minimum that has to be free, and we're going to make three of these per day. So basically, this uh, batch here is uh, bunching up or or 
booze production. And now let's nail down the food production as well, and then I'd say it's a good point to say goodbye for today, as sad as that it might be. So, uh, the kitchen. Let's go for all the three work orders already. I, I really like to do all three at once. So if we don't have, if we have less than 100 meals, go and cook that stuff. If we have less than 100, uh, well, well, 200 meals, cook that, that stuff. And as long as we have less than 1000 meals, you cook that stuff. So we limit these to uh, 3, 3 and 10. And then we got the basics down. This is by no means ideal. I'm just putting up something real quick because I don't want to get stranded here on a uh, booze and food shortage at the very beginning of the run. So I really like to take care of these basics as soon as possible. So let's bring up a stockpile zone down here that will be accessible from the, from the agricultural district. And then I'd say it's a good point to outro for today and uh yeah welcome to brightness portals we're going to we're going to have to do a lot of things here we're going to have to probe for the iron we're going to make war with the goblins i'm really looking forward to everything that's uh, going to go down with this story and i really like the the logistical distance between gulf cobalt and uh the the new fortress this makes sense in a narrative way. And look at all that war going up on up there. I think this is season three. <laughs> we need to eradicate these guys up there. So season three might be might be in the homelands. Because guess what? Up there, somewhere here. Yeah, Praise Lashes. I think that's the one. That's a fortress that can be reclaimed because it's uh it's fallen to to some beasts, I think. Whatever. I really, really enjoyed this one. I hope you guys do as well. Season 2 of The Savage Lands will be a blast. I already enjoyed Season 1 a lot, but I got the feeling as if the story will only get more and more epic with every season. So leave me your comments down below. I really, really want to know what you guys are thinking. Leave a thumbs up on that one and feel free to leave a subscription. Also, a big, big thanks to the fans and the supporters of this channel, and feel free to check out Patreon, Paypal, and buy me a coffee if you want to join the, the crowd that makes so many wonderful things here possible. I really, really appreciate all you guys are doing, and even those who are never going to click any of these and just watch these videos up until this point, this helps the channel tremendously, believe me when I say that, and therefore, have a wonderful day. Thanks for still hanging around while I'm just meandering and uh, going on. And uh, hope to see you on episode two of this. When we're going to put up some security because I really don't trust these alligators. See you later. Bye-bye.